Turning Red has just been released on Disney Plus for free, and you know that I'm looking forward to this. It's a new Pixar film. I went in without knowing much besides that it's about a girl who's turning red. And here are my thoughts. Without getting into spoilers, I think this movie was pretty cool. Pixar seems to be going down the route of using more cartoony-like animation for their characters, and I'm all for it since the realism route isn't really going to go anywhere. Oddly enough, for a great portion of the movie, it seemed like it had a very pro-capitalist message, which of course is fine, but I don't think I or anyone was really expecting that. The main theme of the movie has to do with the toxicity that comes with honoring your family too much, and I honestly think that in concept of its execution, it didn't hit all the way for me, unfortunately. There's a big point in the movie regarding May's mother where she kind of completely contradicts herself, and I don't even think the movie was aware of it. Nonetheless, I think the climax of the film was one of Pixar's most exciting in a while, and just the way it played out was really cool in my opinion. I really like the cute and quirky atmosphere of the movie. It has a lot of personality. No, no, Pixar did not fall off. How about you watch the movie before making judgments? Goodness. I certainly can't comment on the representation of this movie because I have no idea what I'm talking about, but I'd encourage other people like me who don't know what they're talking about to not just take the benefit of the doubt with this movie, because the recent conversations about Raya and the Last Dragon prove that Disney is not immune to messing up representation just because this is the 21st century. I'd encourage Asian Canadians to make their voices heard specifically on the representation of this film, because it can be very beneficial to opening up meaningful conversations. Anyways, I can't really elaborate on my thoughts without getting into spoilers, so skip to the next timestamp to avoid spoilers and see where this movie ranks on my Pixar ranked list. Spoilers beginning now. So, the point the movie was trying to get at is that Mei wants to embrace her red panda so that she can exercise being her quirky and wild self without the judgment of her parents and their expectations. It was a message that everyone was able to understand by the end without it having to be spoon-fed to us through voiceover. The problem that I have with this is that Mei made it seem as if it was going to be awful to go back to her life before she had the panda, because being the panda was her being herself, but like, we all saw how she was before the panda came into her life. She seemed like she was doing a perfectly good job at being her quirky, wild, and weird self and being happy about it. If anything, being the panda was kind of a burden because she was trying to hide it at first, which meant hiding her quirkiness, which is part of her getting excited. I just don't really see how tragic it would be if she went back to being a full human, knowing how well off she was at the beginning of the movie. On top of this, there was a pretty jarring contradiction in the film with regards to May's mother. May's mother was very adamant on May not showing the panda around because she saw it as a burden and an embarrassment and a danger to society. But honestly, the only scene that really proved any of that was true was the scene where she turned into a panda and shut down the K-pop concert in a pretty violent way. And yes, I get that that was kind of the point that May's mom's panda was violent so she assumed that her panda was going to be violent as well, but that doesn't really give an explanation as to why her character in that moment thought it was okay to do that. She was so worried about May making a scene, but was perfectly fine with making a scene. That being said, the climax where the K-pop stars and all the fans sing to turn the pandas back was actually pretty awesome and looked visually amazing. Like, dare I say, this was honestly the coolest and most unique Pixar climax ever. I feel like this movie in general isn't exactly conceptually sound. Her mom says that the panda runs in their family because their ancestor wanted to defend themselves, but I feel like if the reason that they got the panda in the first place was more in line with why Mei wanted to keep the panda, it would make for a better bookend. Speaking of bookends, I honestly didn't have a problem with the voiceover and fourth wall break exposition at the beginning of the movie. It added to the cool quirkiness, but it unfortunately gave permission for the message to just be blatantly thrown in our face at the end to give it that bookend feel when it really didn't need to do that. Lastly, it certainly was surprising to me that the plot of this movie seemed to cling on the idea of exploiting your quirkiness for financial gain, and not just in the fact that they wanted to raise money to see Four Town in concert, but even in the end, May's family was still using her to make money, which almost kinda sorta feels a little odd. Like, they're exploiting her condition and treating her like a zoo animal so that they can make money. But hey, at least Bob Chapek will approve this element more than he approves of other Pixar elements. Now it's time to see where this movie fits in my ever-changing Pixar ranked list. So one quick update, I don't really have a reason why, but... Onward just keeps moving down for me. It's gone from number 14 to number 19. I don't not like it, but I think when I first saw it, I defended it a little too much because I was super excited for original Pixar works, or something like that. I honestly don't know. I probably just gotta rewatch it. Anyways, that being said, I'm putting Turning Red at number 18, which is between Onward and Cars 1. Yes, I like this movie. I'm giving it a 7 out of 10, which at this point I feel insecure about because I feel like I give everything a 7 out of 10. It feels pretty low on the list because honestly, Pixar is amazing at making 9 
9 and even 10 out of 10 movies. Maybe if the movie was a little more conceptually sound and the message was a little more aware of how she acted at the beginning of the film, it would be higher because I really did like the cute atmosphere and the amazing climax. And I'm sure people are going to rave about it because of the extra attention it'll get for being free on Disney+. Plus. Anyways, if you like this video, I've got a bunch more content to be excited enough to turn you into a red panda over, so hit that sub button. I'll see ya in Radiator Springs.